What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finished Coding. In this new Scratch Maths and Simulation series, we're going to be making an Endless Planet Simulator. Here's a preview of how our game is going to look at the end. So as you can see here, we have a nice stars background and this is going to resemble our sun and the earth revolves around it and the moon in turn revolves around the earth just like it happens in our solar system. Now this may seem simple, but trust me, it is not. We have to do quite a bit of work in this. Now I'm going to tell you right here that our video is going to use a bit of very, very, very basic trigonometry. So if you're not even familiar with that, please make sure you check the learning resources in the description box below and come right back. It's really, really basic trigonometry guys, just one or two ratios. So even if you know a little bit, that's going to be perfectly fine. And that's actually going to be enough for you to understand the entire process. So without further ado, let's actually get into making this. Just finished coding. Yay! So click on, once you get into your online editor, click create and this should redirect you to a new project page where you can actually write your own code. So you should have this nice thing pop up and within a few seconds you should have your project page ready. I'm going to call this Endless Planet Simulator as well. I'm just going to call it 2 so that you know there's no typo or anything with the one I already made. Okay, that's beside the issue. Let's get into the code right now. The first thing we want to do is to delete the cat sprite and you want to head over to uh, choose sprite from the scratch library itself. Now the earth and the sun actually exist in the scratch library and all you have to do is to find it. So head over, scroll a little bit to the east and you'll find earth right there. And now you also want to choose a sprite and you want to upload the sun. So make sure you scroll uh, down below uh, until you uh, reach the S category and then click sun. Now for the moon, we're going to be drawing that and we're actually going to be duplicating the earth sprite. So uh, you might want to just do that later on. So as far as the earth and sun is concerned, let's actually code in the sun first. So for the sun, our code is pretty simple. When the green flag is clicked, we want to just go to the center of the stage and that is going to be uh, go to X0 and Y0. Okay. So I think I'll break this um, series down into two parts, one where we go the earth and one where we go the moon so that we know we have uh, shorter videos but a better understanding. Alright, so that's it for our sun. It's kind of simple but that is all we need. I'm actually going to make the sun a little bigger so I'm going to set the size to be about 120 and as far as the earth is concerned, I'm going to make the size 40. So let's test this out. So the earth, eh, yeah, it's kind of too small here. I'm going to set it to half the size of the sun. So obviously this is not scaled to pro or proportion uh, as it is in real life. But I think this is a pretty good uh, earth size and sun size. Okay, let's actually get into the earth code right now. Now a good place to start is to actually initialize the uh, variables that we will use. So the variables I'm going to be using is uh, our earth x. Okay. And this variable is going to store the, uh, actually I'll um, initialize all the uh, variables first and then explain what they do um, to you after that. So, here we go. Theta, the next one I want to do is earth distance. Call that earth dis. And uh, that's it as far as I can think of in case there is anything more. Um, I will change that immediately. Okay, so first of all, when the green flag is clicked, the sun goes right to the center. Now we need to do a few lines of code for the earth. So when the green flag is clicked, uh, what we want to do is to actually enter into a forever loop. Okay, but before that, we want to set theta to be equals to zero. And we want to set earth distance to be equals to... I'm going to say 100, okay. We might want to change this later on, so just keep it uh, to 100 right now. Now you want to actually have a forever loop, which you can grab from the control section. And here's what we need to do inside the forever loop. Now we're going to constantly check at the beginning of every loop if theta is equals to 360. Now I know I haven't told you what each of these variables do, but bear with me right here for a second. 
Now if it is, then I am going to set theta to be equals to zero. Okay, now let me explain what each of these variables hold. Now the earth distance is always going to hold the distance that the earth is going to be from the sun. Now obviously in this simulation the earth is going to travel in a perfect circle and not in you know the kind of elliptical part, uh, part that it travels in real life but it's going to be a pretty good simulation besides that. Now our earth distance as I was saying is going to hold the uh, distance between the earth and the sun. Theta is going to hold an angle which is kind of difficult to explain so I'll add in a helpful image right here hopefully that helps you. Um, next thing is our earth x and earth y and those two are going to be holding the current positions of the um, uh, current positions of the earth so earth x is going to hold the x position of the earth and earth y is going to hold the y position of the earth. So since I've explained all of those things, let's actually get into what we need to do in order to um, set those variables. So we want to set Earth X to be now cos of theta, okay, times, now I'll explain this in a second, oopsie, that was <laughs> something that just popped up. Okay, so I'm going to set it to be cos of theta. So, okay, this thing just does not seem to be going, if we notifications are annoying. Okay, here we are. So cos of theta times uh, so cos of theta times uh, the uh, times the earth distance. Okay. Uh, okay. There we go. So again, I'll explain this with the help of a diagram right here. And similarly, we're gonna set earth y to be the sine of theta. Um, times the earth distance and next thing is since they're storing the current coordinates we'd actually have to navigate to the coordinate and what we want to do in order to do that is to say go to and you should see that in your motion category and we want to say go to earth x um, for the x component and earth y for the y component now lastly we want to actually increment theta by one and uh sorry not set change theta by one uh where's that yeah change theta by one so the change theta by one is actually what's going to power the entire revolution now theta is actually going to be the angle between the sun and the earth as uh, as per the figure i'm going to attach right here now theta is going to change constantly which means the angle keeps getting bigger which is going to enable the earth to move because of all these trig ratios Okay, now let's actually test this out. So now you can see the earth moves kind of pretty well. It's obviously quite slow, but that's perfectly fine. In order to increase the speed, we need to actually increase theta. Um, but one more thing I want to do is to actually increase the earth distance to be about 140. So let's actually test it out. Now, as you can see, the earth almost gets to the end there. So I'm going to make that a little bit lesser. Maybe 125 is a good estimate. So yeah, I think that's pretty close enough. That's also going to leave um, enough space for our moon to revolve around the Earth, in case you get what I mean. Alright, that's our Earth Sprite. Now, the Moon Sprite is going to require a video of its own, because that's kind of like the Earth, and uh, it's just a few more changes. Now, in case we want to speed up or slow down the sprites, I'm going to do it in the next video, so make sure you check that out. So that's it for this tutorial guys, if you've made it this far, please help me out by giving me a like and if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified about all our uploads which release daily, ranging from scratch videos to python videos to simulations to games. So make sure you hit the subscribe button below and also click the notification bell. So thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you on the next video, bye bye.